we're going to pick up right where we left off in the last video and we were talking about the levels tool of course and we were working against this underexposed image and we fixed that using the options here now one thing i wanted to point out to you that i didn't show in the last video is this little save as default option here this is very useful to use anytime you can use this in photoshop and it sort of speeds things up especially if you have a particular or specific manner in which you like to fix your images so for instance we use the fine dark and light colors to fix the underexposed image so let's say you wanted this to come up each time you would simply click save as defaults and hit ok and so let's go ahead and make sure that comes up again let's actually just close out of the levels dialog box and let's go back to image adjustments and we'll open up the levels dialog and go back to options and there you can see this is automatically selected now now one thing also I wanted to point out to you is that auto when you click auto this will actually use whatever default mode you set in here so before it was using the original default which was enhanced brightness and contrast but now it'll actually use the fine dark and light colors so once again auto will correspond to whatever you set in here okay so the three things that we're going to review in this video for the levels dialog are these eyedroppers over here these handlebars and these output levels and you will remember in the last video there are two ways that you can access the levels dialog one is you can go to image and this allows you to sort of do something on the fly but you can also add it as a layer so that's what we're going to do so it'll be the same thing i guess that's what i'm trying to say here we're going to cover these options in our adjustment layer but again it'll be the same thing so let's go ahead and cancel out of here let's now go over to layer and we're going to hit new adjustment layer and we're going to get and we're going to hit levels and you can go ahead and just use the default name here hit OK and there you can see we've got our level and again everything's pretty much the same we have the eyedroppers here we have the handlebars and we have the output layers and we have the auto button but again we just don't have the auto options now we're going to cover layers later on but basically a simple explanation is you can add as many layers as you want and the nice thing about layers is it allows you to do very complex effects which we're going to get into in future videos and basically what layers are think of them like see-through sheets you can make some adjustments to it but your original image this layer down here is not affected so think of it like sheets stacked on top of each other over your original image you can make as many different adjustments as you want and in some very complex photos you'll see dozens and dozens of layers and again we'll get into layers in future videos but first we're going to take a look at the handlebars these handlebars right here that you can use in the levels dialog and actually before we do that let's actually open up a different image here I'm going to open up the overexposed photo just so we have a different image that we're playing around with so again let's open that up and let's go ahead and actually we have to create a new adjustment layer here so we're going to use the handlebars to correct this overexposed image and as we know with an overexposed image there is simply too much light in our photo and we can see that right here everything is trending to the right we have nothing here on the left for the darker portions of the image so what we want to do is kind of balance that out so that's what these handles will do so basically the left handle is going to increase the darker portions of your image so if we start dragging this to the right it will increase the darker portions of your image and of course that corresponds to this value down here which as you see starts at zero this middle handle here controls the midtones and we'll get to that in a minute and then this handle on the far right controls obviously the lighter parts of your image and if you started to drag this to the left it would increase the lighter parts of your image but we want to go ahead and use this left handle so let's go ahead and start moving this to the right and as you can see the image is now getting darker and we're getting close to actually fixing this and making this look like a normal image. Now you'll notice that the midtones, the midtone automatically adjusts as you move the left handle. And you can also see that the value increased here. So we have a higher value in terms of the darker portions of our image. And you can play around with this as you see fit. What this allows you to do is precisely fix your image, a lot more than anything you can do with auto. Even if you use the options, this gives you a greater level of precision. So again, this image now doesn't look washed out like it did before since we corrected it by moving the left handle in and increasing the darker portions of our image. So basically, this is distributed a little bit more evenly. Okay, so I think you have an idea of how these handles work. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a new image here. And as always, I will provide the links to these images in the description of this video. And let's go ahead and open up this nice picture of this Japanese garden. And let's go ahead and create an adjustment layer. And of course this is going to be levels now as you can see this is a little bit more evenly distributed now one thing about the midtone handle is this simply adjusts the balance of the midtone levels in the histogram so you can move this either left or you can move it right now if you drag the midtone handle to the left it's going to open up the lighter parts of your image 
if you drag it right, it's going to increase the darker parts of your image. So let's go ahead and first move this left. And you can see how the image is getting lighter. Look, it's really opening up the lighter portions of the image. Now, if we go right, you can see it's getting darker. So you can see how we're actually we're really improving the contrast of this by moving this midtone handle to the right. Look how much nicer actually that photo looks. So again, if you play around with these handles, you'll start to get an idea how you can fix and make some of your images look even better in terms of the contrast. Now let's take a look at these three eyedroppers over here the eyedropper tools. And we're just going to talk about the basic function. I just want you to understand the concept of these, and then we're going to use these in many later videos. But I just want you to understand what these are doing. First of all, I want to let you know that these three eyedropper tools correspond to these three handles. So you can see in this top one, you see how there's some dark in here? This corresponds to the left handle. And you can see how this middle one here corresponds to the midtone slider. And of course, the bottom one corresponds to the right handle. So that's the first thing you want to understand, that these basically just correspond to these three handles. So what is the difference? Well, here we're actually kind of controlling the levels in terms of the darkness and the light and, of course, the midtone. And we're sort of doing the same thing over here, but we're doing it by pixel. That's what these allow you to do. You can actually go here and select a pixel that you want to set for the minimum level of the channel. So, for instance, let's go ahead and select the dark eyedropper. And there you can see it says right there, sample an image to set black point. Now, what I want to tell you is that you don't want to go and select a light pixel. That wouldn't make a lot of sense. You're actually, with these, you're actually setting the darkest point of the image that you want to work against. We probably want to set something down here, for instance. And there you can see that altered it a little bit. Or we could go ahead and use this one. But what you don't want to do is go ahead and select a light pixel. See how that really distorted the image? Actually, I'm glad I did that because you can always revert the changes that you did with this icon right here. This basically allows you to undo everything we just did. And see, everything's back to normal. So that's pretty nice. And I want to show you one more thing while we're talking about these icons down here. Let's go ahead and slide this midtone slider to the right. Now, what this does is allows you to actually toggle back and forth between the original image and the changes that you made in the level. So let's go ahead and hit that. See how that's nice? So you can go ahead and toggle back and kind of review your changes and make adjustments accordingly. I've actually used this quite a bit. Go ahead and switch back and forth to see what the original background image looks like. So I use these two quite a bit. So again, I think you now have an idea of what the eyedroppers are used for. You can actually zoom in on a pixel and select the color that you want to work against. Now again, I just wanted you to understand these at a very basic level. We're going to use these later on in many videos. Now let's talk a little bit about this slider right here. This corresponds to these output levels. So this really kind of controls the overall contrast of the image. That's, I guess, the best way to think of it. But basically, uh, these work a little bit differently. So let's go ahead and take this left handle and start moving this to the right. And what this does is it actually pumps light into the darker parts of the image. Notice that? Take a look at this rock down here. You see how dark that is? Now watch what happens when I start moving that right. See how that's getting lighter and lighter? So that's the way that works. Now, if we take this right handle and start moving this to the left, see how this kind of dulls down the image? See how the lighter parts are getting darker now? Take a look at that sky. See how that's working? So again, you can use these to control contrast too. Now, the final thing I want to talk about, and this is where the levels tool can get very interesting. You can actually pick a channel. And in this case, let's go ahead and pick blue. Okay, and let's go ahead and start using the midtone slider here and adjust this. This actually can create some nice effects. See how that turns green? And now let's move this to the left. We start pumping blue into the image. See how we're pumping blue with those midtones? The opposite of blue apparently is green. So if you start moving this to the right, you get a greener effect. So you can actually select these channels and start creating some interesting effects to your photos if you choose to do that. So uh, let's go ahead and select red. And then let's go ahead and move this to the left. And as you can see, we're pumping red into the image. If we move to the right, we're pumping more green into the image. So again, this is how you can start to do some interesting effects with your images. Okay, that's going to do it for this video.